There will be a lot of analysis and for a very long time about why India's dream run at the ICC Cricket World Cup 2023 ended so abruptly. Why did a team that won every single match up to that point fall short so decisively against the Australians? Now, there are many questions about what happened on the field and there are many observations and experiences about what happened off the field and to figure out all of this to understand all of this better I'm going to go to my go-to person on all these matters and that is somebody who's one of the most perceptive commentators of the sports and cricket ecosystem in India and she's also one of the best sport writers India has at this moment please welcome Sharda Ugra Sharda fanfare da 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 <laughs> Hi, hi, Anuradha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all those good things you have said. Uh, it's called pressure. Now I'm under pressure. But but thanks a lot. It's, it's, it's great to be chatting with you today. You writing about it have described this Indian cricket team and such wonderful words. You know, I'm quoting from an article you wrote for the India Forum. What a beautiful article. And we'll discuss some of the points that came up there. But the first bit, and that is about this Indian cricket team, you said it competed with Cut glass efficiency. That phrase is so beautiful. Never seen before from teams of, of our past. That it would be monstrously hard to beat in the final. So first, why did this team, you think, lose the final? The final was played under... So eventually, under rather, all cricket matches are uh, eventually turn on some slice of luck, stroke of luck, slice of fortune. Uh, what someone says, what, what the Pakistanis beautifully call... Kudrat ka nizam, which is just some universal stars happening, stars aligning kind of thing. And of course, all efficiency and performance and great matches come with it. Uh, so the Indians played sensationally through the tournament. They were playing literally on working on a knife edge, given the fact that they had an injury to Hardik Pardia early, early on. And then Mohammad Shami came in and then just became this, you know, uh, uh, destroyer par excellence. And uh, but they were literally playing on that little knife edge. And what happened against uh, in that in that final is that all the fears that um, maybe I'm Athletes are super elite athletes, don't get scared. We get scared, the fans get scared. Uh, all, all the fears sort of came home to roost. You didn't even win the toss. There's a lot of talk that that is that, that the match was settled on uh, the kind of conditions that they were and the fact that Australia was able to take control of those conditions by winning the toss. So that's the sort of nerdy, yeah, go ahead. Sharda, so, you know, uh, pardon my ignorance, but, you know, when uh, uh, in the final, when um, Pat Cummins won the toss and he said that India should go into bat, Rohit Sharma was asked what he felt about having to go into bat. And he said, you know, had we won the toss, we would have done exactly the same thing. He said this on yeah, live. So yeah, yeah, but it doesn't mean it, 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 he meant it. A lot of the times when when captains lo uh, lose a toss, they say, yes, yes, this is what we are going to do. It's just also sort of mind mind gaming uh, oh, your opponent okay. in one way. Um, he may have gone into bat, but and, and the thing is, when when Pat Cummins says, you're, I'm, I'm going, I'm, we're fielding, uh, bowling or whatever. So we were just shouting and saying, Rohit, this is the match on a plate to you. Obviously, it's not because they knew what uh, the Australians had read the conditions very well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the conditions and the pitch in cricket is some absolute bafflement to everybody barring people say the curators but we don't know so it's literally pretty much you're, you're making an assessment of it and who makes a more accurate assessment uh, is 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 the person who can hopefully produce the performances that back that assessment which is what the australians were able to do um, are you saying that india's yes. assessment india's assessment was not correct and b it didn't even uh, win the toss so both these factors have played a role no what yeah, yeah. So you, if India had won the toss, would they have batted? I don't know. But what normally, you know, we can just guess and say, okay, let's let's believe what Rohit was saying that they would have batted. Um, but they were not uh, uh, good conditions to bat in after a particular point in time. The wicket started drying up. Now all this is just a lot of it is uh, uh, sort of science. A lot of it is you're you're looking at it and saying, look, why is so and so not able to get the ball off the square? Obviously, he can't time it properly. It's not that he's suddenly gone from scoring centuries to to, to absolutely struggling to, to to get a run 
So we don't know what India's assessment of the wicket was because we don't, because India didn't win the toss. They just yeah. had to respond to what the Australians yeah. gave them. So I had a conversation with Melinda Farrell, who's a friend of mine, a journalist and broadcaster from Australia. Mm-hmm. And she said, I have come to the conclusion that just like there is intergenerational trauma in psychology, uh, in therapy, there is intergenerational confidence that Australian cricketers carry with them when, when they go into a big match like this. It's like that the, the mongrel in them, it's, I, I'm, I'm not using the word mongrel in, a, in an offensive or, an, or a I derogatory sense. Yeah. But it's just that sense of saying, this is it. This is our game. We're going to take it. It's very hard to beat Australia in finals. I think they have played eight finals and won five or six, sorry, six. Or they've, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's just a mad number. I mean, uh, I should know that number from the, from the, uh, off the top of my head. Uh, but uh, it's just mad how many finals they've played and they lose very few finals. So then there's that factor that comes in uh, as well that kind of compounded with all the rest of it. And eventually Australia went into that match with no pressure at all because all the pressure was on the I mean, host team. Yeah. That stadium, that ground, everything had been built up uh, to make the, you know, the fly past and all the rest yeah. of the things that they were going to so the, the Australians are under very little pressure mm. and uh, their, their, their uh, uh, sort of mantra was let's try and silence the crowd. We silence the crowd, we've got the game in that sense. And they were able to, it, it was an exceptional performance by the Australians, really. Um, it literally, like they said, it was their best performance of the World Cup that they pulled out. And India had the day when they knew they didn't have anyone to bat after Jadeja, they had the, the, the bowlers to come in. And, um, and it all sort of collapsed in a, in a heap. I want you to get a little personal and tell me how you're feeling as a cricket fan about this loss. Uh, I'm feeling not the commentator, not the commentator. It really sounds absurd, but fans get up the next day feeling a little sick, you know, and when the fan in you gets up feeling, yeah, what is this? Mm You know, and and also what's happening, there are many other sort of emotions that that, that turn up because uh, you realize that, you know, you've seen the kind of performances the team have put in, you know, some of them won't be able to play a World Cup again, you know, a a couple of people, because I'm of another slightly older generation, I know the people on the support staff, Vikram Rathor, Paras Mambre, Rahul Dravid, you know, so you know how much work they put in and how wretched they must be, they must be feeling and how everything uh, uh, turned out. You do feel a bit, uh, not even a bit, you feel a lot, Uh, everything work slowly the next day but I have to say this that I was at the 2003 final where India lost to South Africa in South Africa and it wasn't that bad I didn't feel that bad as I did now I think it's just age it's been 20 years you would hope to have grown up a little bit but uh, yeah it was not that sort of traumatic because you understood that the team had played beautifully through the World Cup no Indian team has played like this uh, uh, to get there. I was thinking of the last World Cup that we had won in 2011. Yeah. And that was almost like, it was like, uh, you know, we had many Keystone Cops moments in that, in that, yeah. uh, in that performance. Mm. But, but uh, it's, it, you feel all, you feel awful for the players and for their, and, and for the, you know, the coaches and the support staff and the work that they put in uh, to the point that it could come to this. I mean, had India won the toss, <laughs> you, you know, you never know. Might have been a different story. But oh, tell you know, just I'll I'll sort of get a little nerdy with you. Even Anuradha, you know that uh, Travis Head, the the man of the match, and that yeah. he played that crazy Indian that took that crazy catch. Had that catch been one inch away from him, he would not have got it. Yeah. Had the, had had he nicked one of the balls that took in Jasprit Bumrah's second over, he would have been out. And so there's like I said, there's luck, there's fortune, there's there's, there's so much of the of uh, mm-hmm. the stars, how the stars align, and they didn't align that day for us. Given the number of cricket teams and World Cups that you have witnessed, uh, and how would you compare this team? There seems to be clear consensus that this is India's best team ever that, you know, people have seen playing. Okay, so there is a time uh, uh, time band that, that that puts. When you say, I've, this is the best team I have seen playing. Uh, do you agree? Uh, where are you on that? And will this continue, you think? Had they won, no questions asked. Because what are teams for? Teams are there for the winning. Mm -hmm. Uh, How did they play at the World Cup? Sensationally. Did they play better than the 2003 team that reached the final also? Yes, Mm -hmm. much better in terms of their their margins of their victory and the kind of uh, of competition that they were facing. But you have the 1983 team, you have the 1985 team. You're talking about the 50 over white ball. You've got those two teams. There's a team in 85 that won a tournament in Australia led by Sunil Gavaskar, Ravi Shastri and the OB. There's that team as well. So you have to look at Audi when Ravi Shastri got the Audi. 
Audi, yeah, the, the Audi tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So that was called the World Championship of Cricket. Everyone was there and the yeah. Indians won that. So you have to be a little, you know, recency bias can kick in at times. You have to say, look, and our team won the 2011 World Cup with enormous amount of pressure on them. They did it. You know, they chased in a final mm-hmm. and, they, and they pulled it through. They beat Australia in a quarterfinal. Mm-hmm. That to me was the big performance in that World Cup. The moment they won the quarterfinal in Ahmedabad at the old stadium, by the way, um, I said they're going to win this World Cup. I was so confident they were going to win this one. I kept telling people India has reached the final. They're going to win and all. Of course, I didn't know anything. <laughs> we got we got smashed in the final. So it's it, it's up. It, it's performance in the sense of the margins with, with which it won games is phenomenal. The performances that it turned out, the bowling attack was fantastic. I don't think we've had a bowling attack like this. But then you're looking at uh, the result and you're saying, look, the sport is eventually decided on results. So, so uh, I mean, with great love and respect to all of them, but I'm going to wait for the for, for, for the great greatest Indian team to turn up in the future sometime. Yeah. Interesting. Let's go to that Pat Cummins quote, right? Uh, about that, you, you know, his aim was to silence the crowd and the noise of an Indian crowd in an Indian stadium. What do you make of that? And do you think this is just about um, about the size and the sheer population and the passion that Indian fans bring into the stadium? Or this was more to that and it was something that cues the kind of political uh, surround which within which we exist at this point? So Anuradha, this has been a very different kind of a World Cup as compared to the last one that India hosted in 2011 mm-hmm. uh, in the sense of the story that is built around a World Cup. Uh, so of course the Indian team was the most, uh, was a favourite, they were under pressure, they were host, they were hosting as they were in 2011, but they were sharing hosting rights with Sri Lanka and with uh, Bangladesh as well. And Pakistan and Pakistan yeah. couldn't yeah. because of, the, yeah, of, that, yeah. of that incident that happened. Here, this World Cup was almost like India's solo World Cup and the only team that mattered in the way it was organized and presented. I'm not talking about spectator response. Uh, In the way it was organized and presented was just that there is the Indian team and that's all that matters because they're going to win the World Cup and we're going to push them all the way. So there's a little bit of over jingoism that I have not seen of of a scale before that came from the organizers themselves, from the BCCI themselves in various forms and shapes and, you know, the whole uh, this thing. And the silencing the Indian crowd is a very common thing that foreign teams tend to do, say, starting from, I remember in 2005, there was an England tour of, of India and Nasser Hussain said that. He said, I want to silence the crowd because, um, and the crowd's reaction sort of twisted in 96. We were a very different country before liberalization. We yeah, were a very yeah. different country. In 1996 World Cup, the first time you started hearing that no one is clapping for the other team. And this is in Mumbai and Bombay and, uh, you know, uh, and not in Chennai, Chennai and, and in Bangalore, Javid Miyadad got booed. And so that whole shift of um, why people come to a game was happening. But I feel in this World Cup, and it was particularly magnified here because it was almost like they were, the crowd was told that it's not uh, good to do. I mean, you're hearing of uh, fans in uh, Bangalore, one Pakistani fan in a Pakistani yeah. t-shirt saying, you cannot cheer Pakistan Zindabad, yeah. you know? Yeah. So that kind of thing, the the absolute absence of another competitor, another, uh, you cannot win a World Cup without other teams in it, right? So, but the, the, the absolute, um, almost invisibilizing of their presence on the field was uh, happened in everything in the broadcasting uh, what we saw on television uh, sometimes uh, in what we saw on the ground there was the dj the dj would never play uh, would rarely play they didn't need to be a dj at an at a 50 over match hmm. um, so the general tone of these world events is that the, the, the 2020 is just more relaxed more casual more um, of a party as dj yeah more of a party, there's music, even if it's a World Cup. But the 50 over World Cup, you'll have music, but there's no DJ. But now this was just IPL translated and put into this. So you had this kind of, and this, you know, trying to chant, get get, uh, the, get people to chant and playing uh, Vande Mataram on the speaker system every time India played. I mean, uh, it is a World Cup. You are just hosting it on behalf of the ICC and other world nations. You are just the host in that sense. That, that, that understanding was just not there mm-hmm. um because the indians won that kind of thing just kind of gathered momentum and it and, and it became it became uh, you know it became stupid to say that oh, why why should we not sing vande mataram in our own country our team has done so well they won so well so that 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 also came in but you have and again this is happening all on the like you said it's happening on the outside 
and i think silencing that ahmedabad crowd in the final was very very important as a, as a factor because then it was able to it's literally like when an indian crowd is making noise umpires cannot hear a snick it's like that mm-hmm. you know and this is in like from 70s 80s onwards uh, uh, when an indian crowd is making noise people can't hear the captain calling them to change yeah. their field position and all kinds of things but when an indian crowd is silent you know and so we said okay this is this is what opposition teams do yeah. this is, it, it happens all the time the difference between what happened in ahmedabad in the final and what happened in i, I wasn't at the final i'm just yeah. speaking on behalf of yeah. what i've read and spoken mm. the indian team also felt that where are, where's everybody why are we alone here in that sense you know because the crowd is your 12th man in many ways mm-hmm. and at a match and in in these in these venues like say in older venues in eden gardens or yeah. in chennai or in mumbai yeah. the crowd starts going and they start chanting and they'll start sort of pushing for the team to do well they'll try and lift them we've seen games where it's where it's happened even one good ball it doesn't have to take a wicket but the crowd is at it you know but this did not happen because it didn't seem to be like it was a cricket crowd it's not fair to say that there were 92000 people yeah, in that stadium yeah, yeah, yeah. They, sure there were a like, good amount of cricket fans there but their voice was not heard loud enough for them to say like look we are here we have, we've come to see the game it's okay if the team uses and so on it's really fascinating to hear this and you've written about it very beautifully i must mention this article for people who haven't found it and they should it's in the um, india forum uh the india forum journal the, this piece that you've written and you you know it's it, there's research and there's reportage and there's commentary and uh what i found interesting there sharda is you say that the number of visitors i mean a world cup event should get a lot of visitors at, from all the cricket playing countries right uh we didn't have those kind of numbers inflows at all right you didn't see them they were not there they were just like uh, and it's not like they'll come so i have quoted uh, the fifa olympics in brazil and the rio olympics mm. and those are massive numbers are in lakhs so mm. they don't come in lakhs but like say for example the bami army the people the team that's yeah. uh, people that support yeah. they'll get about 8 to 10 to 15000 people that will come and travel around them and they'll you know they have they'll get seats they'll get tickets and they are they are the australians have a group i think called uh, uh, the fanatics so mm. they also come in in smaller numbers but you see them they're visible they were not visible here because their number was so small so uh, someone was telling me that there are a couple of hundred english fans came that's different from like thousands you know that, that's the thing the reason this happened anurada is because the schedule of the world cup was announced so late it came 100 days before the before the tournament the first match mm. which is absolutely unthinkable because there's so much that goes into trying to get a whole traveling party well, to come yeah, to india yeah, yeah. and people are saying where's the announcement and when someone was asked uh, someone uh, there was a there was an event in australia i think or uh, no it was in england someone asked the bcci media manager that where why is the world cup schedule not being announced and his response was so much like what about re that we've heard everywhere his response was i'm sure he'd been told to say this if he's asked that why are you not talking about why australia did not re- uh, refund the money of its fans uh, for the 2020 world cup that is not an answer Right. That is that is that is traffic traffic diversion, <laughs> but it's and but, and in the power equation between the ICC and the BCCI at this point, and that is you know firmly in the favor of the BCCI because of the money power and the clout it brings, thanks to its massive audiences. Uh, are, are you saying that the ICC was not able to hold the BCCI account BCCI accountable on this front? Surely they can't be happy about this, right? no they were not and i don't know whether they pushed hard enough in that sense you know i don't know whether there was any i mean honestly i don't know what happened inside the boardroom sure. uh, but i know that there are people in the icc who who keep asking and they, it kept getting it kept getting delayed hmm. and at one point they had come to the, in the icc um they had come to accept that things will only happen after the ipl finishes and you're looking at literally 2 3 months to get this thing going because this is like just another tournament is just another ipl kind of thing that we're doing is just like the women's premier league we, the bcci did it's not again the trend, because we have the 2011 world cup as an example the 2011 world cup had a, a tournament director it had and they would have weekly phone calls about these things so uh, there is a record of what happened in that tournament how it was run the pressures that were there and the organizers it was all there and the I biggest ticket we ask for this No, there was no. There, there is no officially announced tournament director, which should have been announced at least eighteen mm. months ago. The tournament director, I think, for a World Cup, uh, we are now. There's a twenty twenty four World Cup uh, ICC event, mm. or is it twenty twenty eight? I forgot. There's a tour. We know who's the tournament director of another forthcoming ICC event because it's there. So that was not done. 
um, there was no local organizing committee, which is the which is the organization that goes and and, and does ICC's work for it on the ground to start doing the you know the groundwork months ago. That was not there. One million dollars salary yeah, a year. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was nothing of that. They just turned this into a you know a BCCI organizing event with help from the ICC staff that when they'll turn up mm-hmm. and they'll do things. That's why you have this thing of the fans just being foreign fans. I mean, imagine a cricket world, a, a cricket World Cup in India. It's like the ultimate thing because for a foreign uh, visitor, it's like cricket in India, you know, in the South Asia is is another different entity to what it's, it is in the West. An experience, yeah, yeah. It's an experience. Plus, there's history, culture, food. Yeah. Uh, the weather's okay. It's a little bit hot, but you'll manage it. All of that, and there was nothing. You know, there was there was no marketing of this event uh, elsewhere because the event was. Uh, announced so late that this is what the that this is what the schedule is and this is how it is and this is how i mean tickets were released 45 days before the match why do you think the bcci uh, came at it this way given that they have hosted world cups in the past what is going on what have you missed i think it's a centralization of power hmm. uh, in the fact that they were not uh, uh, so jay shah is the secretary roger bini is the president and yeah. there is a there is definitely a denial to delegate jobs and give responsibilities and so-called power to somebody else other than the secretary of the BCCI, which is Jay Shah. So Jay Shah is the center of the, of the BCCI's universe. And that's why you have these uh, sort of uh, um, delays and that's why these things are happening. Had there been, a, of course, there is an acting CEO of the BCCI called Himang Amin. Uh, had there been a properly functioning executive office in the BCCI, there would there would definitely have been some stir to say we need to get this going in advance. When are we going to do these things? But of course, you don't do this in the BCCI because it's an insult to the status of the person. If if you question, so who are you to question? The, the the World Cup organization will happen when we decide it happens. So this local organizing committee was then given to these five office bearers who are who are uh, of the BCCI. So it's the president, the vice president um the secretary and there's two more people who, who have forgotten that's how important they are uh secretary joint secretary vice president and and uh, so this and they said you are in charge of venues in what way are you going to be in charge of venues you know right. so it's all it was all very cottage industry kind of an organization of an event and it reflected in uh, how it the, the matches were held on time everything happened it was fine all that was there because if anything, the BCCI does, they organize 1,000 matches a year, hmm. 2,000 matches, that happened. But the rest of the stuff that needed to be done with it, marketing, yeah. ticketing, different visitors from everywhere, all that was just absolutely absent. And you, and you felt it and you saw it. The Prime Minister announced at the IOC meeting in uh, Mumbai that uh, India would like to bid uh, to host the Olympics and is very keen to do so. Uh, the 2036 26. Olympics. Will we be judged in the way we hosted this you know, in the consideration of that bid, given that there are so many other factors that will go into uh, making that bid? I think uh, it happened when there was an IOC meeting on in Mumbai, you know, when this yes, whole thing about yes. the Pakistani visas, yes. the Pakistani visas happened. Yeah. At an Olympic Games, nobody needs a visa from, from the government of the External Affairs Ministry. The IOC's accreditation card is your visa. Hmm. So uh, when I went to China for the Beijing Olympics, I did not have a Chinese visa on my passport. I was carrying an accreditation card from the IOC. So then you cannot get away. So that's the kind of Hmm. uh, uh, level at which you have to operate. So you're looking at this and seeing Pakistani journalists are not getting visas. Pakistani team is not getting a visa to come quickly enough. You're doing all this other stuff uh, with with people. That will not work uh, if you want to host an Olympic Games because that takes the the government's role. It is definitely there. It's mostly money that the the IOC is accounting Thing, the money things are another level hmm. but this kind of stuff about uh, uh, you know whether you can treat your visitors including the competitors shabbily uh, that will definitely have been noticed because the international press also wrote about it we also wrote about it and we said this is outrageous that this is happening hmm. uh, you'll not be able to get away with that and it'll, it'll definitely be uh, against you i think the bidding of the olympic games has also changed it's a different kind of conversation now that they have yeah. uh, and i'm sure this will come up because people are not, uh, this is the internet. It's the internet never. Yeah. yeah. The internet uh, is always awake. It's always noting things down. Yeah. And that's what, uh, you know, videos that go viral and memes that go viral are, you know, all contribute to your perception about everything. Yes. yes, um, yes. So 
uh, Sharda, uh, one quick question about the Ahmedabad um, Stadium because uh, that is, and the fans in Ahmedabad are getting a lot of stick, both the stadium and the fans and their behavior uh, in terms of not displaying sporting behavior, especially in the final, leaving early, you know, booing the umpires, not really there to watch the victors lift the cup. Is this, uh, what do you make of it? Is it just a one-off thing? Everybody stunned by not getting the result they wanted? Or is there more here? And is the more sometimes maybe unfair politicization, you know, unfair from the from the left of spectrum side where everything to do yeah. with Ahmedabad now is, get, you know, is looked at through a certain lens? I mean, I've not been to the ground, uh, this particular new ground. Yeah. Uh, but I've been to the old ground. So what I can say for, for the old Ahmedabad, for old Moteria, is that the mm. worst crowd behavior came from the clubhouse. The worst crowd behavior came from the people with the most tickets. Mm. And this looks like it's repeating itself even at the Narendra Modi Stadium. Because mm. who, you know, uh, Babar Azam got booed and heckled and Mohammad Rizwan got uh, chanted it from the clubhouse when he was going back to the dressing room. Mm. So that behavior has still stayed. There mm. are, I mean, I, I have friends in Ahmedabad who are cricket fans who, who just find it so frustrating to get to games, to get tickets, to even reach there. They, they find that the that the you know uh, one of my friends said I'll never go there again because it's so scary when you're trying to get out of the ground. There's so much of a crowd. The exits are so bad. So there is this section of the population that is also there. But the point is that we'll get to hear the stuff that did not happen, and and I think rightly so because you are you are it's a final of a World Cup. It's not an IPL game, for example. You know. Yeah. Um, what has also happened is that at this point at this World Cup, I went to two games in Bangalore. Suddenly, in the middle of non-India games, you hear people chanting "Bharat Mata Ki Jai." And you're saying, what is it doing here? You know, what has that this got to do with this? So there's either it's there are people who feel they should say this, that this is like something or there are people that are put into the crowd. I don't know. I mean, I just found it odd, which never happens at cricket grounds before. Um, so they played even they, and why is it? It's not unnecessary politicized because you are playing Ram Sia Ram from Agni Purush chorus on the PA system. Adi Purush. Which is that yeah. yeah. Adi Purush, sorry, sorry, Adi Purush, let's not get to Agni Purush, Adi. So those kind of, and it stopped after Ahmedabad because people in the ICC, the Indians that were there said, this is absolutely unacceptable, it's, it, it shouldn't be done. And then there were stories about the Indian team's shirt was changed to saffron. I'm not saying the Indian team has not, their training shirt was changed to saffron, their jersey yeah. before the, before yeah. the, uh, so you'll see them practicing in it and all. Okay, not saffron, let's call it orange. Orange, We yeah. have played in blue and orange jerseys before, um, in 2019 at a World Cup, which was given away for auction. So you're seeing all these signals that are coming and um, they don't belong to the cricket as such. So it's no longer just cricket, you're saying. It's not just cricket that's at play here. I mean, in this in World India, Cup... In any case, it's other... never just cricket, right? There's so much more correct, going on. Correct, yeah. There's so much else going on. It's almost like that there is something else that's going on there that's trying to push... Uh, all these images, all these kind of, you don't want Pakistanis to come. You're showing those fog ads non-stop on television yeah. about Pakistan, mm. which is also bizarre. There was an uncertain sense of what was going on uh, in this thing. And Ahmedabad seemed to be the place where uh, this happened. And this is good. It's the biggest ground in the world. It's going to stage the biggest game in cricket. It staged India, Pakistan. It got to stage all the yeah. uh, England versus Australia. But they didn't have people to come and watch. England versus Australia is a big contest. It's, yeah. it's a traditional contest yeah, they didn't have people to turn up it's the first match of the world cup they're in different kind of opening ceremony then they wanted to have an opening ceremony during the india pakistan match yeah, but yeah. they didn't have it and all that kind of jack so it's it's so it's been so shoddily and clumsily handled that mm. even if you are trying to do propaganda it's it's either very obvious or it's just fallen on its face because um, you know you the result didn't go your way right the fly pass that happened this is the indian air force um, yeah, you know, they most are, unusual, I thought. Yeah, what is it doing in a, in an a ICC PCI? event? Yeah, and in a, in a, in a, in a private event. event. Yeah, 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 and it's not happened before. This is almost like the fly pass that the U.S. Navy uh, 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 planes do during Super Bowl. You know, that's I think that's the thing that they wanted to borrow from. Yeah, uh, Sharda, <laughs> interesting perspective. I'm going to ask you one last question because I've got to wind this up, and that is, what will you, given all of this and you know the frustrating surround uh, around the game, and of course the big heartbreak and disappointment that India didn't win the final, what is the one thing that stands out for you where Indian cricket, the Indian cricket team and Indian cricket is at at this point? 
I think the Indian uh, the Indian cricket team is 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 at, is at a uh, extremely sort of pivotal stage in the sense that they would like to be world champion. They would like to be dominant. Um, you know, their performance was dominant until the final. They want to dominate world cricket, and we they have just players. Need of, you know, the tag. They just needed yeah. to that get the tag right. The official yeah. champ yeah. that yeah. Yeah. the just world champ. Yeah, yeah, they needed to be champions. And uh, we have cricketers of enormous talent, you know, enormous, just unbelievable talent, and so many of them. So that is just burgeoning, it's growing. At the same time, you've got the fact that this th there has been a takeover almost of the of the cricket uh, system mm -hmm. for this World Cup to make it all about, you know, Mera Bharat Mahan and Bharat Mata Ki to make it nationalistic, make it jingoistic, yeah. and not as joyful as you remember Indian cricket uh, uh, as being, as, as celebrating. But at the same time, uh, there are cricket fans are, are, are a special uh, sort of tribe in themselves, and you just hope that they'll be able to uh, bring the game back and and make a bit of noise uh, and, and have reason to make noise when when as, as the, the, the season now begins in full. Sharda, as always, it's a pleasure, but you never mince your words and you always manage to offer insight. So thank you very much. And we hope to keep reading you more and to keep seeing you. Thank you so much, Anuradha. Thank you for having me. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Bye.